Hey everybody, welcome back to Jägerhorn. Today's episode is a little bit of a special occasion, since I'm going to be working on a string of buildings. It's really going to be a bunch of facades, as opposed to what I've been doing so far, which is just separate standalone buildings. So it's a little bit of a test to see to what extent I can actually bring this whole themed area together. So it's kind of experimental in that sense. So without further ado, let's get into the time lapse. Alright, now the first building that I wanted to start off with here is the largest building of the whole set. What you don't actually end up seeing me do here, but what was actually quite a big part of the creation of this row of buildings, is uh, creating a bit of a composition of the whole set before I detail it all. So before I move in and create a facade, I like to just put a bunch of very simple walls and blocks together in a sort of basic shape, but lacking all of the detail and texture that I'll get into later, just to get an idea of what kind of composition I want to have with the facade. Uh, and in this case, I decided to go for a tallest building with a spire right at the uh, right at this intersection of the paths, which is the building that I'm building right here. And the idea is that all of the other buildings that are going to be next to this are going to be both lower and set to the back a little bit. So this building both comes out to the front the most, uh, but it's also the tallest out of the whole bunch. And I basically kind of did that to get an idea of like how I want all the masses to kind of be distributed alongside this row of facades. And I really feel like having the tallest building right here is the, the most good looking way to create this whole thing. I ended up removing most of that because I don't think it looks really good on time-lapse to have that whole mess of random objects right in the middle of the park but I did take a picture and like I'm using that picture as a reference while I am building all of these buildings and in fact honestly that's the way that I mostly do these things usually so if you're struggling with like getting the right composition of buildings I think this is definitely something that can help you out detailing is something that you just have to put time into and eventually by adding enough stuff it'll usually end up looking good but I always find that I struggle a lot with composition of buildings and trying to get the right shapes and sizes in so that's something that I actually practice quite a lot before the time lapse. So honestly most of the shapes of the buildings have already been set while I'm working on this I'm just kind of going through all the scenery items and adding the kind of details that I thought would be fitting for the theme. Speaking of which the theme is obviously going to be European Alpine style, much like the rest of the park. And it is mostly inspired, again, by Swiss architecture. But I think there's probably quite a bit of Austrian in there as well. It's just kind of general Alps-ish mountain architecture that is all clustered together. So for this first building, I'm going for the really typical combination of a stucco ground floor with some extra scenery details that you might not always see in real life, like these cornerstones and really fancy entrance. And then the second floor and third floor is all wooden, and you've got those very typical, traditional, super large overhanging gables and eaves on the roof, which I'm quite a big fan of. I actually ended up using this building later on on Twitter as an example of how much a single small spire can influence the way that a building looks because I was always planning to build a spire on top of the roof, hence why there's a tiny little wooden post at the outer end of the roof. And I definitely think it makes a great impact on the way that the building looks. The next thing that I wanted to do though, is work on this smaller building on the side, which is not as important. It doesn't really draw the attention as much, but it does fill up the whole facade quite nicely. And it is also functional, because I at least wanted some of the buildings to be functional, and there's going to be some toilets in this building right here. Presumably, these toilets are probably going to be quite a bit larger in real life than that single tile that the in-game toilets are. So realistically, there should probably be a whole toilet building throughout this facade, since the, the toilets should be quite large. But for now, functionally at least, it is just one tile right here. Now, one of my biggest challenges with making this whole facade kind of, uh, well, convincingly alpine themed is that a lot of the building styles that I'm using, like this one as well, again, the ground floor is just rock and stucco and the upper floors are wooden and we have these typical balconies coming out at the front and these large eaves and gables. 
The problem with this kind of building is that they're usually set apart from each other and they're never really connected. There's always at least a little bit of space between these. And when you look at these typical traditional European mountain villages, it's really just a bunch of these buildings that are spread out apart from each other with all these gardens and roads in between. So trying to put these buildings together and make them separate facades of what is actually really just one single building is something that at least I, I found quite difficult to do since these buildings look most convincing when they're actually spread apart, when they're not connected in this way, but I had to connect them in some way. And especially the fact that they all have these roofs which overhang on the sides in the front of the building makes it quite hard to actually connect these buildings and not have stuff kind of clip into each other or make stuff look really awkward. So with this building, I guess I kind of tried to get over that issue by ang making the building angle slightly different so it kind of curves away from the other building which means that the roof eaves don't end up clipping into each other and that looks a little bit nicer but for this next building I decided to make the roof uh, not well parallel actually to the path whereas with the other buildings you can see the gable turning toward the path but in this this case it's going to be parallel and I took a lot of inspiration here and I definitely mean a lot of inspiration to the point of rip-offing, especially in this building. Just the textures and detailing is different uh, from the composition of the buildings in Europa Park's Swiss area, which is a beautiful area in the Swiss part where the bobsled kind of like twists around the buildings in the area. And there's a tiny little alpine village right in the middle of that whole bobsled trek. And it's, it's really cute and charming. I don't know if too many people go there because it's a little bit of a, a hidden thing and there's a, just a very narrow path leading through it. But I thought the idea of having a sort of horizontal part that connects to another building with the gable looking to the front and outward was something that worked out quite well. And uh, they also created this little space underneath the building where you could sit or there would be some scenery down there. So I thought that was a really neat idea and decided to put that in here. And I think for the overall composition it works quite nicely because as you can see everything is kind of curving away from that front building. Everything's also kind of getting a little bit lower uh, when you're looking at the front building. And um, that just kind of creates the whole impression that that building in the front is a little bit taller than it really is. So yeah, I think that works out quite nicely. And now what I'm doing here is finally working on this spire. And you'll see in a minute the huge impact that adding one simple small spire to the front of a building makes uh, when it comes to the building. I remember one of the tweets at the time, and uh, embarrassingly I'm talking about months ago here. One of the tweets said uh, that this one spire kind of turned the building from a Colorado to uh, a Switzerland kind of place, which definitely makes sense. You know, up, up until this spire, I think the buildings are somewhat generally alpine. But especially with the addition of this spire, I think it gets a way more Swiss kind of look to it. I uh, Before I started working on this, I wanted to get some references. So what I usually do is I create a folder somewhere on my computer's image folder and um, basically made it the Swiss, Art Nouveau and... Uh, Belle Epoque kind of alpine architecture folder and just put every single Swiss building that I found that fits into the style in there and looked at a bunch of the spires and figured hey I could actually kind of make something like that so this little spire is a bit of the results a bit of an amalgamation of all the ones that I found there um, but I think it definitely helps sell the theme a little bit more and it creates a bit more of a weenie it's not exactly a weenie but it definitely makes the building stand out much more from the other buildings. I think when you're building a, a single building with multiple facades, so you've got a single building like this, but you're trying to make it look like it's multiple buildings just to make it much more charming. Um, I think it always works to create some buildings where they're just kind of filler. You don't really have to look at them. They're just kind of there to sell the theme. And you have a few select buildings which are the main points of attention. So you've got a few buildings which are slightly more detailed, slightly taller, and uh, which guests are gonna want to be drawn toward. So 
for me, I decided that would be this building right on the corner, which is taller and more detailed and has that spire, unlike the rest of the buildings. Which from a park standpoint, I think uh, works out quite nicely as well, because it's the only building that's in full frontal view when you're coming toward this area from the path that's right in front of it. So I think that is drawing you into the facade a lot more than if this were, for instance, just a bunch of houses that all have the same height and all have a very similar design. I know there's that whole uh, School of Life video about how to design a great city. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I disagree and agree with on that video, but one of the things is they do advocate to make every building a similar height and a similar style and similar design. And while I do agree with that, you definitely need some points of interest and some things that kind of break the mold. Uh, so, in this case, that's the front building. Now all of these other buildings are, again, just kind of filler, trying to fit into the rest of the style. Although I am definitely bringing some slight variations with every building that I add. So this building, for instance, has slightly different colors. For instance, the, uh, the second floor has that yellow stucco going on, and then the bottom floor has that interesting uh, sort of... I totally, the porch, there we go has that interesting porch going on and a whole different color scheme and there's also a bit of timber framing on the top here. Actually, yeah, I guess I decided to redo the color of that. Hmm. But yeah, as you can see, in any case, every building has some slightly different detailing, some slightly different shapes. I definitely don't want to repeat the themes from any building that I've built so far. Besides, I think it's more fun to do it this way with every building to make something uh, that fits in with the rest that you've got so far, but also experiment with some other stuff. I think that's just more fun than trying to recreate the same style over and over again with every part of a building that you create. Also, it is time for some flowers, and I wish there were some like flower boxes that were a little bit more like the ones that you see in a lot of, the, of these alpine villages. What I've always noticed is that if you go to these places, there are flower boxes, but unlike the ones in Planet Coaster where the flowers just kind of neatly stay inside the boxes, these things just go everywhere and they're absolutely huge and most of the time you can't even see the boxes that the flowers are in anymore. It's just these huge bunches of flowers all over the balconies and the windows of these buildings, which is awesome because foliage always makes a building look way more inviting and charming. Uh, but it's kind of difficult to do in Planet Coaster because none of the flower boxes actually do that, so that's why I decided to add some of my own flowers into the flower boxes there. I think that's something that I've been doing for quite a while, but I've barely talked about why I do that, but that's basically why. I think it works a lot better to just add a, a heap load of flowers into the flower boxes rather than just leaving them the way that they are. Now over here, I could not be damned to create this whole roof over again because God knows it is really annoying to do and it takes way too many pieces. So I decided to bring it over from another building. Honestly, what I think one of the greatest blessings is of Planet Coaster is the fact that you can take things in and out of uh, a certain building. So even though this was a separate building from the station building that I drew the roof from, you can basically select some scenery pieces from a building, say for instance the station that I just did, and uh, remove them from the building, then click on another building and multi-select the scenery pieces, and click the icon which makes you add separate scenery pieces to a building, and that way you can just kind of switch which building the uh, scenery pieces belong to. And I think at times that's a really awesome trick to just kind of copy over some of the things which you made previously, which you want to reuse in another build. So yeah, I ended up doing that here because <laughs> that definitely ends up saving a lot of time. And uh, there are also some typical little touches that I added in here, like the little spire that's on top of the roof right there. Anytime that there's a bunch of roofs coming together or there's a little pointy bit, I always just like getting one of those Christmas decorations, those icings, to create a little spire shape and then use the cables, which is just about the only really narrow, tall vertical piece that we have to create a small spire, which is heavily influenced by the Efteling, but which you can see in a lot of styles around the world. And what also kind of inspired me on this building 
is in a lot of villages in the Alpine area. Uh, the only ones that I have real experience with are the ones in Austria, but I know this definitely happens throughout the Alps. There are many buildings where they use paint to decorate the buildings. Supposedly, I've been told, but I'm not sure if this is the theory, but I, it probably is. Uh, supposedly, decorations were painted because that's cheaper and the farmers of the mountains weren't exactly the most rich people, but they still wanted their houses to look somewhat interesting. So rather than getting actual real physical decorations and carving them into walls, they just painted them over the walls, which does make a lot of sense, but there's nothing that you can really do in Planet Coaster to get that kind of look, but I think the icing pieces from uh, the Christmas set actually work quite well. So there's a little bit of decorations right beside the window right there. And finally, I do believe this is the final building of this build. I decided to build one more house with some slightly different slanted roofs. I think for me, uh, slanting your roof slightly different for every single building is something that gets kind of annoying over time. But it definitely is really rewarding since it's one of those very minute differences, which still makes you like recognize that certain buildings are different rather than getting the same pitch in the roof for every damn building. So yeah, I'm mostly using these custom placeable uh, roofs here just to make sure that the pitch of the roof is slightly different for every building. And then there is the, the beams that hold up the roof, which you see in a lot of Alpine architecture throughout Europe, which are just so typical that I wanted at least one building where you've got a lot of these beams. And finally, and this has really become something that I'm almost overusing in the Jägerhorn build, I am placing the small uh, spire, if you can call it that, in the front of the building with the gable decorations. By placing all of these beams in the front and a vertical wooden post. Now if I remember correctly, I think there is going to be a small stall in this building. Uh, that's why there should be a tiny door. I was spending way too long trying to get the right parasols, but I just ended up going with these in the end. But yeah, there we go. So there's a little shop. Definitely wanted to make sure that most of the, uh, the shops and stuff like that is going to be in this one big building here. If I could, I probably would have made this an actual restaurant. That would have been a perfect space for it. But with Planet Coaster limitations, a, uh, a small stall is just about everything that I can get in there. But you know, the idea is still more or less the same. This is a, uh, a big row of facades, which kind of sets the mood as a village, but at the same time it's a single building with most of the important facilities in the park, which I didn't have so far, because to be very honest, I always forget about placing toilets and stalls in my parks. So I'm glad at least this time I was on time to add these kind of things. Oh, and I guess there's also a little bit of a modern touch in the fact that there's a lot of glass on the upper floor as well. And uh, yeah, here we go. Bunch of uh, decorations again, just to make everything look a little bit fancy, I suppose. Maybe it's a little bit too fancy, but you know, it's a theme park. Besides, I do like the way that this looks. I don't think many theme parks would do this kind of thing. I think for theme park realism, it's a little bit over the top. But to be perfectly honest, <laughs> like I said, I just like the way that this looks. So, there's decorations everywhere. Just deal with it, I guess. And I think at this point, it's more or less done. There's just a little bit of clutter that I wanted to add here and there. And I do have to say the facade is not entirely finished yet. But finishing some of the remaining stuff that I still need to do is going to be part of the next episode. In which I will have an overview of what it looks like in the finished product. But for now, I'm actually... Not going to show you very much of that yet. It's not entirely finished yet, and we'll get to finishing up this whole row of buildings in the next episode, including the backstage areas. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.